fog or most especially the outlay come out. I think people are pretty familiar with it. Sweet. That's no one, so I'm actually knowledgeable on it, which is good, because I kind of have some idea what it does. Um, so some, some really quick background. Uh, once upon a time, I worked at a place uh, called Treviso. Uh We are a startup that extended Postgres uh, to do streaming. So kind of in the same space as Streambase, really focused on bigger data. Um, we targeted a lot of different markets. Basically, we extended Postgres, wrapped uh, Postgres, added some core, core functionality, but fully stocked Postgres too. Uh, worked just like normal in a lot of ways. Uh, but essentially doing MapReduce on data as it came in. Um, and we went after a lot of different markets. Uh, one was the ad space. Um, so we talked to a lot of companies like LinkedIn and MySpace and Facebook that um, wanted you know, reports on unique users, unique users by location, and all this sort of stuff. Um, it took them weeks to build up a report, um, even against a uh, pretty good data warehouse. Um, the other was ad space. So um, one of the companies, it took them for seven days worth of ad data, 10 days to run a report, um, just to know, you know overall impressions, rough numbers, I think. So uh, at Tremisa, what we actually did, um, you know, the obvious solution is, and the first solution is to like count, which we all know how bad this is in Postgres. Um, so what we did was implemented something called a prox top page. So this is an approximate kind of uh, count of your top X uh, across the data. Um, this was pretty good, but as soon as we had it, the top wasn't good enough. Basically, we wanted a pretty good uh, approximate for everyone. Uh, so from there, we actually had the intern go in and uh, compress the um, This actually worked pretty well to give us a good unique set, um, but the company ended up kind of getting acquired. Um, so the technology could be re-implemented, but it doesn't really exist today out in the public. Um, so Hyperlog Blog. Hyperlog Blog is a Postgres out of, is a paper out of Google. Um, it's a uh, Payment home value, bit observable patterns, stochastic averaging, and harmonic averaging. Um, and if you understand what all of those things are, you're well ahead of where I am. I have looked at a person in the room that might have a better idea. But um, I kind of understand some of these. But really what it means is, well, I'll get there in a minute. Um, so I heard about this. Um, but what was most interesting to me was it was implemented by aggregate knowledge. And as soon as they put it out, I Notice because they're an ad company that I was familiar with. I had a lot of these problems around how many you know, unique users are close enough or are doing something. So I read this, um, read through the paper, um, and I, I had this reaction. Uh, but I like, sat back and kind of looked through the use cases. So really, uh, think of it as probabilistic uniqueness with a, a small footprint. To me, it's close enough to the state. Um, it really is quite close. Um, and really, really big data situations, it's perfectly accurate. You want to be able to make a decision. I wouldn't use it for revenue reporting, but I'd use it for making a decision of which thing is more effective. Um, so use cases. Um, it's a semi-distinct count, I would say. Uh, think PG stat statements. It's doing a lot of sampling, that kind of thing. Uh, commands that are run, and you can pull up data about them. Um, ad networks, web traffic. Uh, these are some pretty, pretty clear use cases, and I'm sure there's quite a few others. Um, and the nice thing about it is uh, it works with roll-ups and groupings, which is uh, kind of the key differentiator for it. Um, it's not, you know, one bucket of distinct per day. We can do more complicated things with it. So uh, digging in a little bit to uh, how it looks. Um, it's a C extension. Uh, it's got Debian packaging, so you can just pull down the package and install it. You can build it from source if you want. Uh, once you've built it, you're just going to say, uh, create extension and then you basically got the data type. So in this case, I've got you know a, a really simple table, um, and I have uh, a, a type HLL called set. Inserting data, there's a couple functions. So you don't insert data directly into it. You're always going to pass data through a function. So basically, it's going to hash it for you right away. So you can pass uh, integers or uh, text, and I believe you can write your own. I don't know why you would. These work. But uh, let me kind of rephrase this in a real-world example. Um, so daily uniques is something that a lot of websites may care about um, in an ad space. 
marketing space, those kind of apps, um, typically care report on that sort of stuff. Um, so what I would have is the date, which is a you know, distinct thing that you expect. Um, and then I would have users. I could do something like this, where I'm going to, um, in this case, I'm doing this a batch of once. Uh, so I'm saying for all of my users in my users table, let's roll this up. Um, we can do it one time, and then we can have all sorts of kind of groupings across it. So I'm going to hash the, uh, the integer ID there and say when did they log in and that kind of thing. Um, and then I'm going to do this uh, other function that's going to build it up for the first time. Uh, in most cases, actually, with HLL, you're going to do an update. Um, so you're going to update the existing day and just add the new uh, hash value into it. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, and then the interesting stuff. So of course we can say, you know, give me back the, the data for one day. Uh, we'd expect that. Um, but this is where it gets really interesting, is that we could you can up all the ags for the entire year and say, you know, what's the cardinality of it? What are the uniques across all of that? So we've got built-in functions to do that. So a roll-up of a, a, a rolling seven-day window is really easy to do if we have uniques by individual. And that's where, you know, kind of the value comes from. So, narrow use case, but, but really nice in, in that kind of uh, situation. So, uh, a couple of good practices with it. Um, I'd say really only two. Um, it uses update in most cases. Um, I've been waiting to do this on every single time you see a visit to your website. Um, do it as a batch, just because the lock that's going to take. Um, it's going to be crap on your performance. Uh, as much as you can batch this kind of stuff, even into an hourly basis, it's going to be a lot better. Uh, and the other thing is to, to tweak the config. So on the, the config, and when I say config, there's uh, some tuning parameters. Uh, the first two that I think are really interesting or that are really applicable are the log 2 m and the register width. Um, so the things to note here, these two together are really going to affect um, what your cardinality looks like and how much data you can throw in there and still be quite accurate. Um, each time you increase the, uh, the log 2m, basically the, the log base 2 of the, the overall registers available, um, you're doubling the size of uh, the storage for it. Um, and then you've got the individual bits per register, which you can control. Um, there's the, the guide online, um, the readme for the project has kind of what's the actual size to convert this, and it tells you, um, and can also help you with the cardinality overall. So it really depends on your use case. As much as you can know this ahead of time, it, it can help. Um, the other thing is that HLL will automatically switch between uh, explicit and sparse as soon as the data hits a certain threshold. So you can control that um, and basically say, I wanted, you know, I don't care that much about uh, how explicit it is. Um, you can actually turn uh, sparse completely on or off uh, if you want within there, uh, which again starts to affect some of your accuracy. Um, so the the real question about this, I think, is um, is it is it better? Like, why not just do some batch rollups and that kind of thing? Um, it actually will do in a thousand two hundred eighty bytes um, estimates of tens of billions with a few percent error. Um, so it's really efficient on disk size. The rollups are nice, um, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, but if you've got a use case where you're counting uniques, visitors, that kind of thing. Um, it can do it really efficiently and with a, a small enough margin of error. Um, so a few more resources to, to dig in. Um, this is kind of the 30,000-foot the 30 uh, 30, view. Um, the package is on aggregate knowledge to GitHub. Uh, there's a Debian package. I don't think it's on PGXN. Uh, it probably should be. Um, they blogged a little about it. And then uh, Dimitri uh, Fontaine uh, has uh, blogged about it as well. I think he actually has a couple posts on it. Um, where you can dig in a little bit. So I kind of blew through all that, but uh, questions? Yeah. Uh, if you're running with the same tuning parameters, uh, yes. Uh, if you start to change the parameters, um, it is not, but yes, it is this read.
Yeah, I mean, it's fairly broad overall. I think this is the, the really clear use case. There are some other use cases and other things you can do. Um, the implementation of this, um, it's coupled with the paper, and it does some other things as well, um, the Postgres implementation. Um, so it's not identical of here's exactly what's in the paper. It's a little bit deviated, and, and takes advantage of some other things. Um, I think it takes a little more flexibility when it goes from you know explicit to sparse within Postgres um, to take some better advantage of uh, the Postgres storage engine, really. Um, but I haven't mapped it directly to the paper to see you know where it goes different. not built in, you might be able to actually create uh, a function and take advantage of it, um, but there's not a built in um, function to basically expose that um, to compare uh, if it's two different kind of types, really. Um, if it's like comparing a, a hash of the two things, actually you might be able to. I'm not sure on that one. You can union between them. You can find. Yep. Yeah, you wouldn't get the specific list. It's the overall union. So you could find how many are close, but not which ones. Or you can find how many aren't close. Um, so it's definitely on the aggregate. And basically, if you're looking at data from an aggregate perspective, it can be helpful to you there. 